sixth grade, module one, lesson eight. Classwork. Exercise one. Circle any equivalent ratios from the list below. So I find it easiest to take the ratios and turn them into fractions. So one to two is one half, and then I make that into the simplest form. So one half is already in simplest form, so I'm going to leave that alone. Let's see if we can find one that's equal to that. So five to 10, five tenths, if we simplify that, that is equal to, we can reduce that to one half. So these two are equivalent ratios. Now we have six to 16. If I were to reduce six to 16, six sixteenths, I can divide both six and 16 by two and I'll get 3 eighths, and that's simplest form. So this is 3 eighths, which means it doesn't, it's not equivalent to 1 half. So it's not equivalent to the ones above it. Let's try 12 to 32. I can divide both 12 and 32 by 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 32 divided by 4 is 8. So this is also equal to 3 eighths. So these two are equivalent ratios. Find the value of the following ratios, leaving your answer as a fraction, but rewrite the fraction using the largest possible unit. So we have a ratio of one to two. And what we wanna find is the value of the ratio, which is basically just putting it in simplest form. So one to two, we already did that one above. We've actually already done all of these above. So ratio one to two, the value of the ratio was one half. We couldn't reduce that and the ratio of 5 tenths, the value of that ratio is also 1 half. And 6 sixteenths, we found that was 3 eighths. And 12 30 seconds, we found that was 3 eighths as well. What do we notice about the value of equivalent ratios? Well, we notice that when the, when the ratios are equivalent, like these two and these two, they have the same value. So we can say the value of the ratio is the same for equivalent ratios. So basically, you just need to reduce them to their simplest form and see if they're equal. If they are, they're equivalent ratios. Exercise two. Here's the theorem. If a to b, where b cannot equal zero, so it's saying this b can never be zero, and c to d, where d cannot equal zero, so d can never be zero, then are equivalent, then they have the same value. a over b is equal to c over d. This is essentially stating that if two ratios are equivalent, then their values are the same when they have values. Can you provide any counterexamples to the theorem above? So I'm gonna tell you that you can't find any counterexamples. So this is always going to be true because when you have two equivalent ratios, when you reduce them down, and find the value of the ratio like we did above, they should always have the same value. If they don't, they are not equivalent. So let's say there are no counterexamples. And we can also say that all equivalent ratios have the same value. Exercise three. Tavon is training for a duathlon, which is a race that consists of running and cycling. The cycling leg is longer than the running leg of the race, so while Tavon trains, he rides his bike more than he runs. During training, Tavon runs four miles for every 14 miles he rides on his bike. Identify the ratio associated with this problem and find its value. 
So our ratio, it says during training he runs four miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. So we have running, his running to bike is four to 14. Now we wanna find the value. So remember the value is basically putting this in simplest form. So we have four to 14. And I can divide both of those by two. So I get two, seven. So its value is two to seven, or two over seven. Use the value of each ratio to solve the following. B, when Tavon completed all of his training for the duathlon, the ratio of the total number of miles he ran to the total number of miles he cycled was 80 to 280. Is this consistent with Tavon's tra training schedule? Explain why or why not. So we wanna know if what we get here is consistent with two to seven, if they have the same value. So let's start with, we have 80 over 280. So let's go ahead and reduce that. I'm gonna start, uh, I know I can divide both of these by 10, so I'm just gonna start there. And I'll get 80 divided by 10 is eight, and 280 divided by 10 is 28. So I can still reduce some more. So let's think of something that both eight and 28 have in common. I can divide both of them by four. Eight divided by four is two, and 24 divided by eight is seven so i can't make that any smaller that's as simple as it can be and it does have the same ratio so yes this is consistent because both ratios have the same value In one training session, Tavon ran four miles and cycled seven miles. So now he's run four to seven. Did this training session represent an equivalent rate of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? Explain why and why not. So before he was doing two to seven. Remember up here, two to seven? Now he's running four to seven. And those are both simplified. So those are both the values, meaning that no, he did not have, it does not represent an equivalent ratio. So let's say this training session is not an equivalent ratio because the value of this ratio is four to seven, which is not equal to two to seven. And that's all.